Hey everyone and welcome to another Saturday tarot reading. I hope you are all doing well. Let's just hop into what our message is. Okay, so with the Jack of Cups, um, as you can see, there's fish. It is kind of a murky water that this fish is springing out of. And this really talks about subconscious thoughts coming up to the surface, right? So limiting beliefs, struggles that we're having, fear that we're having, um, patterns are emerging. And we're also entering Scorpio season. So I'm still not like super knowledgeable on all astrology things, but I do know that Scorpio season is really big on letting go on kind of releasing and shedding and kind of also this rebirth right so letting go kind of on the same theme as last week's reading letting go of past identities past sorrows and embracing what is now and with october there's two full moons this month there's another full moon that happens on halloween so that's a great time to set new intentions and claim what you want to be and really kind of step into that role but we also have the seven of wands. So as you can see, there's these beavers on a dam and the current is flowing um, towards them. And so they could be swept away, but they're actually found like, they actually have a strong foundation that's keeping them in place. They're home, they're stable. And so this really is about standing your ground and affirming who you are and what you want to be. So when it is that time to let go, you really do need to think on is this something that I can turn into something helpful or is this something that I need to completely let go of? Um, so for example, um, maybe you want to let go of not trusting a lot of people, but you don't want to let go of your intuition. You want to reaffirm that you are an intuitive person and that you are a good judge of character. Now, that doesn't mean that you're closed-minded. That doesn't mean that you only like a certain type of person, but it just means that you are listening to your gut and to your intuition when it comes to letting new people in your life and embracing new people. And that could mean letting go of people that you may have known for the last 15 years, just as, just as much as it looks like really rooting down in new friendships and relationships of people you've maybe just known for a month or two. So um, that's just kind of an example on how you can let go, but continue to stand your ground and kind of figure out what parts you want to let go and what parts you want to redefine for, for yourself. So with the two of wands, we also see, as you can see, it kind of looks like a heated debate over uh, fire and it kind of is really about these plans that you've had, right? You've been making plans to do things for however many months or maybe even years and you don't really know where to start or maybe you've been procrastinating learning or just actually doing the research that you need to do. But now it's saying, how can you actually make this come into fruition? How can you birth the new idea, whether that's a new vision of yourself and your identity or whether it's actually a business plan or something that you want to bring into the world. So this is also a card that speaks to plans being set in motion and to beginning a new path. So it's really interesting that we're seeing this idea of subconscious thoughts coming up for us and then realizing what we want to let go and what we want to claim and using that to set forth on a new path and to actually act on the things that we haven't been acting on. So many of us may have been talking about starting a spiritual journey or wanting to work on their personal growth or wanting to figure out limiting beliefs or maybe do shadow work. Maybe you've heard these phrases and they sound intriguing to you, but it seems kind of overwhelming or you're not really sure where to start or you just feel like it's going to be this awful, convoluted, confusing path and no one else in your life is going to be able to understand why you're on it. And sometimes it makes it seem like you're setting off to sea, right? The way that we all talk about it, starting a spiritual journey, starting a new path, starting your healing journey, all of these words can seem really overwhelming, especially when you're not in this space and you're not already doing this work. It makes it feel like you're leaving everything you've ever known and just embarking on this new path and it sounds terrifying and scary and it can be terrifying, it can be scary at times, but it's also also, the journey and the path that's given me everything that I have in my life now that I'm so grateful for. And this is the truth for so many people that do this kind of work. And it doesn't mean that this is something you have to do for your career. It just means that you are a person who wants to learn, who wants to keep 
growing, who wants to understand the ways that they're holding themselves back and the ways that they're self-sabotaging and instead turn that on its head and reclaim that control that you have over your own life and over your thought patterns. So um, I love this kind of idea of having these thoughts emerge and not running away from them, but instead diving deeper into them. Um, and then what I want to talk about also is this governing energy of the Hierophant, right? So the Hierophant is normally um, talking about spiritual authority and tradition, but we're kind of flipping it on its head. So we're talking about breaking free from tradition. How can you use your spirituality in a new way if you are you know if you are someone that uses tarot cards how can you do a new spread um if you are someone that meditates is there a way that you can maybe pause your guided meditations for a little while and allow your intuition to guide you through those meditations um even like i have this candle burning right now and i've been using green a lot in the clothes that I'm wearing, in the plants that I'm buying. Um, I've been lighting green candles and this has been a way for me to kind of intuit, intuit and use color magic in my day-to-day -day life, right? So there's so many different ways in which you can use little spiritual things here or there or set little intentions throughout the day and focus on what you want what you have to say and and focus on how you can use your intuition to guide you rather than just doing what you see online or just following someone else's plan if that makes sense so you might be asking yourself what this has to do with self-worth and really the reverse hierophant this kind of governing energy of this whole reading is telling us that we may be following the rules too much we may be focusing so much on what other people think that we have created this life of other people's desires for us instead of what we actually want and it really is that call to listen to your own intuition and ask yourself what are you doing for other people what are you doing to prioritize other people around you and that's exactly where the self-worth lesson comes in we might be prioritizing other people's desires for who we should be, what we should want, how we should live our lives, the path that we should take over our own voice. And the thing is, the more that you prioritize what other people say, the more that you don't listen to your intuition, the more that it gets quieter and quieter. And it's hard for you to even connect with that voice or even recognize it if it was screaming in your face, you know? And so being able to take those little tiny steps to connect with your intuition, to follow what your heart desires can really help build you up to eventually be able to hear that voice when it comes to bigger decisions like moving or making a career change or a relationship change. And so a really good way that you can start to get in touch with your intuition is maybe just starting with this weekend and asking yourself, okay, if you have a normal routine on the weekends, then can you take a break from that for one day? Can you kind of play things by ear a little bit more? And this isn't to, you know, throw off your whole week or ruin your schedule, but when you really even start realizing how much of your life is based on certain routines and you start thinking about what caused those routines and you start asking yourself, do those routines still serve you? That's just one simple way in which you can kind of dial it back and look at the bigger picture and say, wait, how did I get here how is this what my day-to-day -day experience looks like am i happy with this day-to-day -day experience and if not what can i do to simplify it or make a change so that i can be happier with it and it's those little simple changes that allow you to prioritize your own voice to hear your own voice um, and a second thing that you could do if that doesn't really sit right for you or you just don't really know how to connect with that another practice that you can do is answering this journal prompt which is when was the last time I listened to my gut. So forcing yourself to kind of go back down memory lane and ask yourself these questions because you'll be able to point out, hey, actually this is that one time when three years ago it didn't make any sense, but I made that one choice and that led me to where I am here. And if you go down that path, you will see that your gut and your intuition have been guiding you all along. Um, and it can help you kind of figure out what it was trying to tell you in those times and how and if the last time you did listen to your gut was four years ago or three years ago, then maybe ask yourself, you know, what what does my intuition want to tell me? And just journal on that for a while. And this will take trust. And trusting yourself is one of the key lessons in owning your worth, right? You're not going to believe that you're worthy if you don't trust what you have to say, if you don't trust yourself as much, if not more, than everyone else around you, right? You want what's best for yourself. And 
If you don't, it's because you have self-sabotaging tendencies that can be uncovered and peeled back through finding your limiting beliefs. So all of this really ties together. Let me know if you resonated. Do you feel like you listen to your gut enough? Do you feel like you need to listen to it more? And if you are interested in a personal one-on-one -on -one reading and self-worth coaching, definitely visit the link in my bio or click the link in the description to sign up. Thanks so much as always for watching. Happy healing.